I'm here in Judy's truck again, and I do have like the blinkers working, the headlights turn on, so on and so forth with that. Um, so now I actually want to get this cluster that we're going to be doing in it. <clears throat> um, we tried a different one, but it's not going to work with this um, setup. So this is what we're going to be installing now. It's what is known as a, um, well, this is just a screen, but what we're putting in is called a Raspberry Pi. It's a little computer, and we have a... Since we're not like every other YouTube channel and we don't continually do everything until the shot is perfect, um, we had a little problem and we didn't find out until much later. So instead of redoing everything, I'm just going to watch it and tell you what I was trying to say. All right, so that's the uh, new screen, which is essentially a touch screen. It's a seven inch screen. Um, it's not too expensive. It works with the Raspberry Pi. Um, we got that so that it sits up there and it's big for her to see. This is me getting it like kind of where we want it. I'm gonna be making the cluster part that holds the screen in along with um, little blinker lights and check engine lights. So that's what these are is the uh, little blinkers and check engine lights that I'm gonna have to make little holes so that we can wire those in and they work. Tell her if there's a problem with the car or if she has the blinker on or the high beams on or whatever. This is the box the Raspberry Pi came in. Um, it's a four gig Raspberry Pi. They're also very inexpensive, but they're like a little tiny computer that anybody can use. I'm not going to, I'm gonna have someone else use it though. Yeah, so now this is where I'm going to be making everything so I can get the bezel ready, have the screen set up, put the little lights in there, and that way we have something to actually mount it into the dash instead of it just kind of resting in there. All right, I spent some time. I got this. It sits in there nicely. It's a little snug, which is kind of good because I'd kind of rather have it a little snug than not. And then that plops on there. It fits really nice up uh, back against it. Um, I am going to cut out this little black piece because we're no longer going to need it. And then uh, now I'm going to take the uh, actual screen that we got and I'm gonna kind of fit it in there. Uh, but I'm gonna mark where the bottom of this is. That way I can kind of put the screen hopefully as center as I can on that. So we've got... That's the, uh, I marked that as dead center of the actual thing. So going to do, and this is the outline of where the cluster sits. I'm gonna do my best to uh, mount this in there, centered, and then the screen should be as dead center as that can be. As far as I can tell right now, the only thing that I'm missing from this is the gas gauge. Uh, the gas gauge will be a separate gauge off to the side. We're just gonna do a normal, uh, what is it? 52 millimeter gauge. Um, but I have the, whatever you wanna call it, the cluster sitting there. Um, these are arrows for the blinkers. We have check engine light, oil pressure, battery light, and um, the last one is the, the headlights, or the, the high beams, high beam indicator. Um, so I'm gonna get the gas gauge, we're gonna put the gas gauge in there on probably this side, um, just because I like everything else being centered. And if I can think of it, I might put another gauge on this side, I just have to think of what other gauge I'd want to put over there that the cluster isn't going to have in it um, as for all that stuff too, it is going to be run off the OBD. Um, so this just gets plugged in and then it gets plugged into the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. And then the Raspberry Pi sends everything to this and we do need like a, you know, keyboard and all the other stuff to get it all set up. But um, at least with this, um, I'm gonna put the uh, gauges in here. Like I said, we might do two, we might do one. We'll see how it goes with that. Um, and then I'll go get the uh, piece made. I'm probably gonna do it out of aluminum. However, we're going to paint it black um, just cause it's gonna fit in better. And it, I think that just being a black screen and then the nice 
LED light up will be good with it and so on. Um, yeah, and then after we get that set in there, my buddy will come over and we'll set it up computer-wise because you don't want me doing that. And then I have this wiring to do, which sure, the wiring does look daunting, but I have most of it figured out and a lot of this is just like radio or um, some of it we're not going to use, like it's power windows, power door locks, but we don't have either. That's kind of the next big thing and then wiring is going to be the last one, but yeah, I'm hoping that this shall be um, soon. So let me get the gauges and we'll continue on. Well, uh, I got the new piece cut. We're going to see how good I did, I guess. I know I was talking about aluminum, but I was thinking about it and we actually did stainless. Um, we're still probably going to paint it, but uh, I just figured stainless would be a little bit better, mostly because I'm going to use these to mount it. And these are really tiny and I'm going to need really tiny bolts, which means on the back of it, I need to weld on really tiny nuts. Now I just got to get it all cleaned up because of course the plasma is not the cleanest cut. These holes are smaller than they need to be so that I can just use a drill and get the hole perfect for the little, um, uh, the little lights that we're going to put next to the screen. And then I also, since we're going to be bolting the screen up behind it, I made the hole for the screen slightly smaller than the screen. That way we can, uh, you know, it just looks like a, a pretty recessed screen instead of any of that stuff. Plus there's these little like wire things and one of those goes in front underneath everything. So I don't want to pinch any wires because the last thing we need is issues. Well, we have um, our metal piece made from the cardboard piece. We're going to paint it black, so don't like we're not going to blind beauty with uh, this stainless steel. But the other thing too is uh, I had to get three millimeter nuts to weld on there, so that this would mount. Well, it's not fun to weld, but the screen has a tiny bit of a gap all the way around it. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got. A little bit of a gap in there so the screen isn't pressed up against metal. I have the little spacers, there are aluminum spacers in there. Um, but yeah, it uh, it fits really good. I'm gonna go set it in there because I also want to figure out where I'm gonna route all the wires and stuff and I'm not actually going to do anything with these wires, um, like soldering them together or anything, until um, Fred paints the, the piece because I want to put it together one time and then be done and not have to cut wires because I'm going to route them all together and then it'll be a pain in the dick to get these little bulbs out. But I already test fit it once. It does slide in there exactly how the cardboard one did, which is awesome. Um, so now I'm going to take the bezel off and clean up that little line that goes down the center of it because we don't need that line no more. I think it's where I want it to be. So I actually have a marker and I'm going to mark the plastic on the bottom and on the top of our little bezel that we made. That way we can put it in in the same spot because I like the distance between the plastic bezel and our metal one. So that'll be a nice flat face. This is little cloth things. Did we get... Oh, compatible with, sorry. So, this is our Raspberry Pi. This is a aluminum case for our Raspberry Pi. There is something to cut. But this is essentially where it's going to be and it's going to um, help with heat management and stuff of the computer. All right, so this is going to be, oh my God. Everything's hard to go together because it's never been together. Virgin. Getting everything wired up is um, definitely turning out well. I've gotten rid of a lot of it. I don't, I don't know if you remember how much wiring was under here, but a lot of it's on the ground over there because I've cut it up and put it in there. We should have all the um, tail lights and everything set up. Um, I have the door wires set up. Now I gotta go look for the OEM connector for the dome lights. That way I can route those wires, which these two here, the black and white one here. And then this is, what is this one? 
uh, accessory section, um, cigarette lighter, window motor, stuff like that. So we'll, I'll start wiring that stuff in here. And then, what is this? This is, I think this is radio because it's got speaker wires and everything. These speaker wires go around to the speakers, so I'll just have to route those. This is, I think, more power extra stuff. Um, and then this is actually something that we're not going to be using, but I love that they put it in here with the proper thing. Um, so this is a cruise control module. It literally has the plug-in. You just plug in a GM cruise control module and now you have cruise control. This is my buddy, Michael. He's going to, uh, he's actually the one that's helping out getting her screen, uh, Judy's screen taken care of because we don't want me touching any kind of computer. Um, but we're gonna plug it in and uh, he's got a lot of stuff set on this or set up on this already. So we're gonna plug it in. He brought some things to make little adjustments if he needs to, so on and so forth. And so essentially he's going to be playing with this thing today, trying to get it taken care of. So I'm gonna go plug it in for him and then we'll get him started on everything he's got to do. Okay, so this one gets... You said one of the black ones or? The black one should be fine. It's not actually carrying the video signal, so it's just it's power and Touch inputs. Yeah, okay. Don't worry, this will be uh, all in here prettier when we're done. This, this is just so that we can get it working. No, it's gonna stay looking just like this. Shut up. <laughs> it's gonna look like one of your cars. <laughs> you always got your little grocery bag with you. I just brought along extra stuff in case. Got to be prepared, you know, bring the kitchen sink so you don't need the kitchen sink. Exactly. Probably keep that case from sitting on the back of it just in case we don't want to bridge anything. I can see about getting a longer data cable for that. That just came with the screen and it's convenient. No, it's probably okay. Is that stuff happening or? Yeah, yeah it's uh, good. There okay. It, goes. Yeah, it takes about 20 seconds before it throws the Android logo up and then by 35 it should be in the app i mean honestly just seeing this this isn't too far off of new cars <laughs> new cars take forever to get their everything working and then we just set up the gauges and see what it can read from the ecu okay do you still have to set like if i turn it on would revs work um maybe all right it should if as long as the ecu is throwing it it's just i don't know how fast it's gonna pull Oh, now you're gonna yeah, wait. Yeah, you're gonna have to set it to like you know constant or just like go straight to start it because otherwise it's gonna. Kill yeah, power. I, I, can, I can find a key on that doesn't um, break when you start it. Yeah, it's, it's annoying things like some cars do that where they'll sit there and cut power to whatever whenever you flip over from accessory to start. Right, right, and I mean I get it. They're trying to keep everything towards starting, but we don't want to do that right now. No, I mean, you're not pulling that much juice for anything that's going on in the cluster when you're starting anyway. No. And the fact that this even converts it from the 12 to the 5? Uh, no, I still need to set up the profile and stuff, so okay. they might not be reading from it just yet. No worries. I mean, it's indicating it's got a connection to the, yeah. the OBD. All right, I'll let you uh, fuck well, around. Probably turn it off, you know, don't waste gas. You can, yeah, uh, control the key however you want. Well, it's actually communicating now. What's that? It's communicating now. Is it? I had to forcibly switch it over to a GM protocol as opposed to letting it do it on its own, but it's staying connected now. Nice. So we're going to actually get in the battery readout and have to fire it up and see what we get as far as other stuff. It is connected now, but cool. now I'm just trying to get like a dash because after I started the car, it didn't come up. There it goes. Oh. Right. This app's not reading from it, so let me do this. 
And so it looks like everything's reading out. Uh, we don't have speed, but I haven't checked to see if it actually can pull that through the ECU. We may have to get like a GPS sensor to collect da uh, speed data. We're going to uh, see if the speed works because we can see the other stuff. So see if the speed works. The hood is also bungee corded down, so we aren't going to go fast. Oh, look, two mile an hour. That's actually probably pretty fucking close. Fuel consumption rate, I'm not too sure how that one's going to go. That's that 0.49 gallons per hour kind of thing. Yeah, with, <clears throat> with the glare on that yeah. panel, I don't think they're gonna be able to see it. But. Okay, 14, probably pretty close. 11, this feels like 12, 11, mm -hmm. 15, yeah, we will, um, it's definitely close, so it's not... Yeah, it's... RPM is good. 10. Battery voltage is amazing. Coolant temp is great. Oh. My bad. Nice. I have a steering wheel, I forgot. Yeah, so... Well, we got to like 20 mile an hour. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that right now. So it's all working. Think it's... Yeah, it's 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 working. Um, there is a little bit of um, hubbub for getting it started and into this screen, which um, Michael's going to be working on still, and um, I'm going to mess with a few things because right now the power to it um, kills when you crank. So I want to make it to where like once the key is on, it just stays on and it doesn't die when it cranks, um, just because of how long it takes to actually get to the start mode. Um, and then a couple other things I want to, I want to work on, um, with it, but at least for our blinkers, you know, they're, they're a little crooked right now, but I didn't put them in there perfect. So I got to also see why it's not blinking, but there are LEDs on this thing. So most likely the reason we got to figure out with the flashers and put an actual LED flasher in it. Um, but yeah, those light up, um, oil pressure light doesn't light up. I'm not too sure on that. Battery light, um, this one actually, the painless harness didn't have a charging signal. Um, so I'll have to look into that to see if we can figure something out for the charging signal. Um, and then the last one is high beam, which the high beam turns on, so that's perfect. The glare is horrible. We're gonna, we're gonna get you a better video or a better image of what that looks like. I think it looks great. It's a decent size. RPM and speed are dead center. Um, coolant temp is off to the side. Perfect. Um, yeah. And then I just have a few more wires to get up and pretty up how everything connects back there. Big step. Big step. Yeah. Getting this thing done. The interior is still a complete mess, but it's just cause I want to make sure the wiring's okay. Um, I just have a few things to do and I got to power the radio and stuff like that. Cause she likes her tunes. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy with this.